Hello my fellow scientists, today I am excited to present some really fun news. The Hardware X paper on the all iron open source battery has been accepted. You all can expect the publication to actually go up in the next month or so. Those of you who supported this project on the crowdfunding, you will be receiving your PDF and or color print shortly. I'll get those out just as soon as I can. For those of you who may be new here, for the last two years or so, we've been working on an all iron battery. So that means it has iron metal on the anode side, which oxidizes or rusts, releasing electrons that then travel through some load. And then that can travel back through some current collectors into iron three plus and to reduce it to iron two plus. So it's an iron anode and iron salt cathode separated by some kind of membrane. And the first prototype looked pretty crude, but over the last year or so we've progressed all the way to little mini cells and found some conditions under which those mini cells are actually quite rechargeable. We've gone from that little mini cell to a stack of six of those mini cells and you can see those here they they do dry out over time we've fixed that with some additional hot glue sealant. We built a 200 mil cell and then improve that using a bunch of little tiny micro cells in order to get the chemistry for a big stack of a whole bunch of these 200 mil cells for a total of one liter. And that's testing right now. So we'll see the results of the scaled cell shortly. A uh, couple of minor changes. Turns out that if you use a whole bunch of carbon black, you can leave out the carbon felt. Um, <laughs> and that may improve performance somewhat. Uh, also, an article came out discussing the fact that solar plus battery storage is now cheaper on a watt hour per watt hour basis than fossil or nuclear energy. Now, this is something I've talked about before and blogged about before where I said, you know, if, if batteries come down below something like a dollar per watt hour and solar continues to trend as it has been for decades then you know within a short amount of time now uh, we will have a situation where you can build one gigawatt of power from solar with enough storage that, that can be delivered essentially 24 7 for the same price as any other modern power plant and that that's remarkable to be here right now i, mean, I remember worrying a decade ago, two decades ago, that a shortage of fossil fuels was going to mean that society was going to go through a sort of uh, major transitional depression like Cuba went through when, during the oil embargo when they couldn't have enough energy. And so they had to make major sweeping changes. And, it, you know, there are great documentaries covering some of the good things about those changes. You know, they went very agrarian. They did lots of uh, urban gardening. Um, and they, they invested heavily in uh, health care uh, that was sustainable, which I think, you know, these are all pretty impressive changes. But on the flip side, those kinds of sweeping changes, rationing, all meant that authoritarianism really had a chance to thrive there. So it, it worried me that we were going to see major energy shortages and transitioning to renewals would mean bad things. But with this change, I don't think that's realistic anymore. I think that in, in the uh, 20th century, the French economy shifted from fossil fuel to nuclear. And I think that in the 21st century, we're going to see the developed world switch from fossil fuel to renewable. And that that's good for all kinds of reasons. I'm going to leave you with this panorama of the five cell one liter battery charging and discharging you can see here that it's charging at 5.4 volts and that it has a pretty reproducible charge and discharge cycle over many cycles i'm pretty happy about that thank you again for tuning in the links as always are in the description below this has been peter allen for the allen lab and i will see you next time